Good morning, everybody. Um, I got a, uh, I just caught up on some of my emails, and I've gotten a, a number of emails um, in the last few days, more than I would normally get. Um, but apparently, a lot of people are watching the, the YouTube that is on television, and the, some of the commentaries that have come back that um, we should keep statistics on the people that are late because in, in this individual high performance person's judgment that most of those people are going to fail. Um, they can't be here on time. If they're one second late to a meeting with him, he doesn't see him, and he fires him. One second, not one minute, one second. Um, two, we, uh, we mentioned that, um, and I handed out to you, Harvard Business Review blog that came from the Harvard Business Review and it talked about how bad it is uh, average managers and average employees and average managers are even worse than average employees and even slightly above average managers in, uh, are, are bad and how detrimental to the business it is, business it is. Now I've always said a lot as does Jack Welsh has for many many years for decades and and he says it's principally responsible for him turning around GE, which most is before most of your time, uh, that um, the, it's not the people that you fire that hurt your business, it's the people that you don't hurt the business. Uh, but it's interesting what the YouTube, the people, of course we're only talking to YouTube, you know, between 5 and 15 minutes or 15, 18 minutes, it's, it's very interesting to see what, what, what the perception is. The perception is reality. Um, they also commented on uh, the way I dress. Now, I used to wear a boutonniere every day of my life along with my uniform. And I used to have fresh carnations and fresh roses delivered to my office and my home every, every day. And sometimes I'd even change boutonnieres and I'd even change. And I was the only guy in Texas that wore a boutonniere. I was the, one of the only two or three guys in New York City that wore a boutonniere. And I was one of the only guys, if not the only guy in London that wore a boutonniere. And, and needless to say, in China, Japan, Korea, Germany, the Netherlands, and all the other places I've done business, nobody ever didn't know what the fuck a boutonniere was. Let alone, you know, they thought it was something you put on the end of your dick when you had sex. Perception is reality. And um, the uh, another thing that came out uh, in the... Uh, um, and the comments on the YouTube, which is quite astonishing, since I'm only talking five to ten to twelve minutes. Uh, the perception is that I give the, might try giving the seminar on YouTube, and he says they, they seems to be they think thousands would sign up for a thousand dollars. I'm not sure that's true, uh, but it's interesting. And they said for those of you that most of these people are emailing, they're seeing in person, but it's not the same. But it's better than listening to the tapes. Another thing that came out is, how come I'm so fucking fit? I'm 67 fucking years old, and I'm probably fitter than anybody in this room, including Marcus and his brother. How is that, po how is that possible? How? And, and uh, Doris has commented, uh, two or three times to me, how do you do this 10, 12 hours a day and plus talk to these fucking idiots another two or three hours a day? You're being idiots. Uh, and uh, so how do you do this 12, 14, 15, 16 hours? Well, one, I like it. So it's easier to do. Two, I'm in absolutely fucking top, tip top physical condition. Whether I'm 67 or not. I have the lungs of a 40 year old. I have the heart of a 25 year old. And I got the blood system of a 30-year-old. So, the, uh, I can work on the line, other than my arthritis, and I stretch every morning. So, if I forget to stretch, though, by about 11 o'clock, 11.30, I'm walking a little more gingerly. And by the afternoon, I, you know, my back hurts. But if I remember to stretch, uh, then, um, you know, it's a pay-priced action. <laughs> Do I get up 15 or 20 minutes earlier than I normally would to stretch? That's... That's what I have to remember. But some, like uh, the first or second morning, my alarm didn't go off, so I didn't get up in time. So I, it must have been the second morning, so I didn't stretch. 
Um, but it's like everything else I work at being fit. And um, the other thing that came out in the YouTube commentary is, um, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it in the close, is it that you really deal with these fucking meatheads for a year, and you talk to these fucks' faces, and you answer their emails, their doofus emails, and you do, do all that? And the answer is yes. And is it really true that some of the meatheads don't take advantage of that and really don't listen or to all the con calls um, with uh, the, uh, their group, or their batch, and some don't take advantage of that? And the answer is yes. And is it true that after one, two, three months, they start falling off like in a battlefield? And pretty soon when you get down to the end, there's, there's not as many that started. And the answer is yes. And the comment I got back is, says, no fucking way! Don't they, reveal, don't they realize what fucking value? This is a cheap seminar at 10,000 pounds. When I said it as a throwaway line yesterday or the day before, all the time I spend, I must be making 50 bucks an hour. And then the last question, this came from a guy that Robert knows well, how do you keep energized when so many of them fail because they don't follow instructions? That's the real question. And that real question translates back to you. And one of the slides we had, I think it was Winston Churchill, is to keeping your enthusiasm from failure to failure on the way to success. Now, I thought about it only a few seconds because I just read that email, but I don't even think about it. I'm so programmed for success, I don't think about the failures. And as I said a couple days ago, I'm more concerned, and I said it again yesterday, I'm more concerned for your success than you are. I make more sacrifices for your success than you do. So there's a dichotomy there. Something's fucked up. Fucked up. And if I really thought about it, I wouldn't do it. If I really thought about it, I wouldn't give the goddamn seminars, because I certainly don't need the fucking money. And, uh, of course, I told you I tried giving free seminars. And that, didn't, that worked even worse. Because nobody was committed. Um, but it's interesting. I guess YouTube doesn't work. And, they, uh, and uh, whether it's uh, a better medium for me or not than the seminar. But I don't get the same high out of um, doing the... Um, uh, I would imagine if I, if I did it in front of YouTube, in front of a live crowd, and then that, that'd be all right. Now I got an email from one of my stars, and I've talked about Mike the Pizza Boy, Pizza Boy, limo driver, big maggot, getting more ass than a toilet seat as a director in Hollywood, right? I've talked about him in the goddamn uh, newsletter. I've talked about him in tweets. I've talked about him a lot. Well, this is Mike the Pizza Boy. The two big, tall bimbos are his. The short, little, fat fuck is Wozniak. Everybody knows who Wozniak is. Yeah, the co-founder of um, Apple. Right? And uh, I didn't know Wozniak was just short. Because Mikey's this tall. Mikey, you watching this? Maybe he's that tall. And he's man of the year so from one of those countries that don't exist anymore. So I don't know how what a big fucking deal it is to be man of the year, but country doesn't exist anymore. But um, the uh, he writes me an email and he says, "Watch your videos earlier. You mentioned you mentioned Steve Jobs. Wozniak said that Jobs was a huge fan of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged and believed a thousand percent in his mind he was part of the superior race who would end up controlling the world before he ever had a, a dime." Sound familiar? Wozniak said he wanted um, people to like him. Wozniak wanted people to like him. Uh, so he never took uh, the top positions. Look at the difference between them both. Billions and hundreds of millions. You want to be liked? You want to be a fucking gypsy that they like? Sensitivity equals fucking poverty. You live in a fucking trailer camp with the rest of your relatives. Fucking gypsy trash. 
Oh, and then he's talking about his movie. I'm not going to promote his movie anyway. But he, he's making he, the movie he's making uh, he made is uh, Raging Bull Two. Raging Bull Two. A fucking pizza guy. And he, with the actors that are in it. And he, and I'm going to have a drink with him. And the guy that uh, is into naked and swapping wives and shit. Now that's his business. The more I think about the business, the more I like it though. Sounds all right for a single guy to me. Guy gives you, oh, here's my wife's keys, and here's my wife's. The consenting adults, what the fuck, you know? And now look at the, the, the I'm going to give you each one of these. Now look at the little fuck with those girls. She was in September of 2010. Yeah, and, uh, and for those of you that don't believe the couching bed is alive and well in the movie business, you're fucking crazy. He's a movie ma maggot now. Maybe we'll bring him to the sawmill. Huh? And you'll, br you'll bring the bimbos with him. Huh? But Mikey, he's a good kid. He's another kid that did what I told him to do. Unlike most. Um, let's see. Last night we saw Danbo. And the music. Dun, 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 dun. And Danbo was a movie that was made about me in 1986, and I used some off-duty BBC guys, and we had uh, two camp, uh, two crews, and we went to Botswana for 15 days when I was on safari. It has not been put on YouTube because I'm not so sure me killing animals is such a good thing to put on YouTube. But if you're if you got some commentary about this, let me know. I killed a whole bunch of animals, um, and uh, they, most of them were hanging in the halls in the trophy room of the house. But uh, I said at the end, my experience, that's just part of my experience, is different because I, I'm from a different social economic milieu than you, so you can't really compare uh, your thought process to mine. But I am here to tell you that irrespective of the fact that you <coughs> jump on lines with knives and shit like I used to do, the, um, you can do this by what Theodore Roosevelt talked about, uh, practicing fearlessness, and another superstar said, you're really pounding emotional bank accounts. And now you got some new shit in your seminar about how you're programmed genetically to be a cunt. And he says, that's new shit. How come you didn't tell me when I was there? And I said, because I'm trying to laser beam focus even more than I ever did beyond uh, emotional bank account to try to get you to understand why you got no nuts. But it's okay to have no nuts. No, uh, n nothing derogatory int intended to the women in the audience, or to Megan, who I look out there, I squint my eyes, and I see my daughter, and so, but it's okay. But it's therapeutic, and most people don't talk about it. they have no, they don't know how to man up. Privately, when we're in my room, and they talk about it, you know, uh, and I told you, we've had married couples and couples, and the husband thinks that the wife is in, uh, happy as Larry, and he, he, um, she loves everything they're doing. She comes in and says, I hate this fucking business. You know, I wish he would break his hip so he had to be in a wheelchair so I could push him around and take care of him and we fucking sell the business. That's normally how much you don't understand what your significant other thinks of what you do. You know? You know, and I've already told you, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. Here I'm euphoric, walking around like I'm in heaven, and then the fucking building falls on me. Okay, today's the last day. It's like sex. It all comes at the end. And we're going to cover a lot of things, and then we're going to summarize. Robert's going to finish up on internet marketing, uh, and uh, that's, that's not filmed because it's proprietary. You already told the gypsies too much shit, like I told you last night. But no, get all kidding aside, you're here to learn. Okay, are there any questions? Thank you.